Uh, my name is Eric Nordmark. I am the CTO at, at Cedida and one of the co-founders. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about EVOS, which is an operating system open source for the edge. Uh, that um, so, oops. So qu quickly here. So what is EVOS? Well, it runs on these these edge devices. We have a few examples up here up front, um, various sizes, right? Um, and it, but the key thing is that it's actually orchestrated using an API. Uh, what this API does, it basically dials home. So it's actually made so you can drop this into any network where you can have outbound connectivity over HTTPS to the internet. And, and, but it's actually built in a way where this is actually eventually consistent, handles disconnected operations, so that this API can handle a, a huge number of devices where some of them will always be disconnected, right? Whether it's because they're powered off or whether it's because the network isn't, isn't working right now. Um, this has happened, it is implemented using protobufs running over HTTPS, but at some level that's an implementation detail. But at some level, this is the essence of what Eve is. Then we have an actual implementation of this um, that runs on bare metal. Um, it's, like it's built using Linux packages, right? It runs different workloads, but it's fundamentally sort of serving that API, right? So, um, and and the, this picture tries to depict some of that, that you know, it has dual partitions for redundancy in terms of updating EBOS itself and, and the, the various um, parts of the, the system. It runs a set of microservices. It has hypervisors inside that you can plug in different ones. Um, supports you know Wi-Fi, LTE, whatever networking, I/O virtualization, as well as TPM chip, so you can actually have a hardware root of trust in this system. So this assumes that these things run on what when I started in this field, dating myself, were called supercomputers, right? Things that are smaller than a Raspberry Pi today, right? We need about five twelve megabytes of RAM and, and disk for EVOS itself um, for the dual partitions. But then we can actually run any workload. You can run Windows on this stuff. You can run regular Docker containers. You can run your a, a Kubernetes um, um, workload using K3S, for example, right? As well as other things. When we started, we thought we would actually be seeing unikernels being deployed on this stuff because people wanted to run small things for this edge. But in fact, memory seems to be plentiful, but relatively speaking, so, um, there's typically gigabytes of memory around. Um, but then the rest of the hardware that's there is actually handed to the applications, like you know, GPUs, FPDAs, those things are assigned to the applications. Other IOs is assigned to the applications. Uh, so this connects to a the 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 Cedita, um, orchestrator, but in general it connects to a controller over that API. There is actually a controller in, in open source as well for that piece. So why do we need an OS? Well, and not just an agent. Everybody else does this with an agent. Agents work fine in the data center because you already somebody else is worried about the infrastructure and secured all of that stuff. If they need to replace the underlying whatever Ubuntu CentOS you're running on, they know how to do that. They just pixie boot the thing, you know, and have a secure management network in the data center. Done, right? Here we have the problem of being able to replace the branch we're sitting on, right? Uh, so, so you can't actually do that with an, with an agent and still know something about the resulting and reliability as well as security of the system. EBOS updates itself. Um, and, and then we wanted it to be, be, and it is sort of OS and runtime independent. You can run different hypervisors, right? Uh, you can run different OCI runtimes. You want to run um, Kubernetes, you want to run K3S, you just want to run Docker, you can do all of these things, right? As well as being able to evolve the set of hypervisors. So in these industrial settings, there's questions about how far in real time will you go running on something that is sort of Linux based. People want to do this stuff because it actually makes their systems easier, more uniform to manage, etc. So this is something we can do because it actually is an OS that boots on top of the hardware. And when we started, we wanted to make sure we could run both VMs as well as containers. We realized that um, that is, at the time, was hard unless they actually ran a, a complete OS. Today, people can do this stuff with Kubeboard and Kubernetes, but so that point is actually stronger. But this is sort of, why, why did we end up building this, this, this whole thing? And it's open sourced in LF Edge. Uh, and uh, you, you can go try this stuff on your Raspberry Pi 4, right? And, and check it out. You need to connect it up to some controller to be able to, be able to play with it. So.